Oh, hey, don't mind me. Yeah, just hopping. Why am I hopping? Oh, well, because today I want to tell you about one of my favorite hopping fictional characters from a picture book. His name is Froggy. Have you ever read a Froggy book before? Oh man, they are so much fun. See, Froggy, he does all kinds of fun stuff. He plays with his friends, he plays in the snow, he's in a band, he goes out to eat with his mom and dad. And the problem is, Froggy often gets in trouble. Not that he's a bad frog or anything, it's just sometimes Froggy gets so excited that he doesn't think about his actions and, well, that leads to him getting in trouble. And today, I want to tell you about one of my favorite Froggy books. It is called Froggy Goes to the Doctor, and it's by Jonathan London and Frank Rimkowitz. Now, in this particular book, Froggy's doing something that all of us have to do, and he's a little bit nervous, and that is go to the doctor. See, it's time for him to go see Dr. Mugwort. Now, I know going to the doctor can kind of be scary sometimes, but doctors and nurses, they'll help us get better when we're sick, and sometimes we go just for checkups, and at checkups, they just want to make sure that we're staying healthy. And that's all that's happening for Froggy. He has to go see Dr. Mugwort for a checkup, but he's really nervous because he doesn't know what they're going to do, but it's going to be the same thing that you and I go through when we go for a checkup. They're going to look in our ears look in our eyes with lights. They're going to see how tall we are. They're going to see how much we weigh. They're going to use a stethoscope. That's the thing you use to listen to your heart. The doctors and nurses use to listen to your heart. And um, well, that's pretty much it. But what he really thinks is going to happen is he's going to get a shot. And he's really nervous about getting a shot. Uh, do you get nervous about when you have to take a shot? Yeah, I, I get it. They're not fun, but shots are there to make us feel better or to keep us from getting sick. Um, and so it's just something you have to do. And maybe if you're brave, you'll get a sticker. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether or not Froggy ends up getting a shot in this book, but I can tell you this is a really funny Froggy book. And I think you'll like it as much as I did. Since today's video is all about my friend Froggy, I thought we should make a Frog Flicker Puppet. Now, Frog Flicker Puppets um, do require you to have to have a few supplies to make. First thing you are going to need is a pair of scissors. Next, you will need a green marker or crayon or colored pencil. That is, if you want a green frog. If you want a different color, well then, go crazy. Pick a different color. But, you need scissors, you need a crayon. Then, the next thing you need is... The only thing that probably you will have to purchase. This is a party blower, and you've probably seen these or played with these before. Typically, you can buy these at a party store, or actually a lot of times, even like in uh, any store that has like party hats and plates and stuff like that, um, you can find these and find a pack of like five or six of them for less than a couple of bucks. But you will need a party blower. Now, if you don't have a party blower, that is okay. You can totally make this without the party blower, and then um, your finger would be the tongue of the puppet. Uh, but these are more fun. So if you can get your hands on one of these for this puppet, that's what you should get. The last thing you need is a sheet of paper and you are either going to do a drawing of a frog's face or if you like, you can follow the link in the description of this video and go to a frog flicker puppet handout that I have made and you can just print one of these off or print multiple off, I don't care. Print them off and you can use this as your pattern. If you're going to draw a frog, frogs. If you don't have a printer and you are going to have to draw your frog on a piece of paper, all you have to do is draw two circles like so. And then just draw a football shape like that. And then draw a nice big smile and I would put a dot wherever you're gonna want the party blower to come out of, and then just draw your frog's eyes. You can just do pupils if you'd like, or you can put some eyelids in there if you want to make it uh, look a little bit different, or you can round the cheeks. And uh, this one looks really worried, so I, I, I'm just gonna do uh, the coloring sheet. Once you have your coloring sheet, the next thing is, of course you have to, color your picture. Now I want my spots to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna go really dark on those first and then we can just be as messy as we want.
Once you have your frog color, don't worry if you've went outside of the lines because guess what? You're gonna cut it out next. And I put a little bit of red in there for the mouth, but you don't have to. You could go black or something like that. But we are gonna cut our frog out. Besides cutting our frog out, you'll notice if you print one out, in the middle there is a hole in his mouth or a circle that says cut out. Now you can cut this whole thing out and that will guarantee that your party uh, blower will fit in there or you can just cut lines grown ups and then that way it'll kind of also help hold your party blower in place. But the main thing right now, let's cut this out and then we will worry about cutting out the center circle. Now a secret for cutting that circle out is to give your paper a little bit of a fold and then cut a snip in there. And I'm gonna show you real quick why I said to just cut like an X in it. So you can either cut this completely out or do like I just did and cut um, like an X or a T shape in there. Then you just take your party blower Put it in from the front, otherwise you're gonna tear your frog out. And uh, there we go, let me show you what it does. So that is it. Once you've colored your frog, cut your frog out, and put your party blower in there, well, all that's left to do is to have some fun with it and walk around and, well, maybe you could pretend to like zap some flies or something like froggy, whatever you wanna do. I hope you enjoyed this craft and I will see you next time. Now in each one of these SJPL Sprouts videos, we're going to give you a tip that you can use to grow your child into becoming a lifelong reader. Now it's nothing too heavy and too preachy and too wordy, just simple things that you can do with your child to help them nurture a love of books and reading. Earlier in this video, I talked about the book, Froggy Goes to the Doctor. And in that particular book, Froggy is a little bit nervous and anxious about his annual doctor's checkup and whether or not he'll have to get a shot. Well, I just wanna to talk to you about the importance of books as a resource for helping you as an adult or a parent or a guardian in helping your child deal with new circumstances that pop up in life. A lot of times we think of picture books or we think of books from the library as just entertainment. And while they're definitely that, books can also be a great tool for helping your child basically see how a situation is going to go before it actually happens. So for instance, the froggy goes to the doctor. While it doesn't get into too much depth, it does go through stepping on the scale and listening to the heart and looking in the eyes. And so when you do go for that checkup, your child will realize, oh, that's just something that happens when we go to the doctor. And no matter what life experience you're looking for, odds are there is a picture book or a nonfiction children's book that addresses that topic. So whether it's going to school for the first time, maybe moving, maybe a change in the family dynamic, maybe getting a new pet or the loss of a pet, Whatever subject you can think of, if you need help talking to your child, books are a great resource that are available to you. All you have to do is talk to a librarian. They will make sure that you get what you need.